So a few years ago, I was in Paris with my family and I decided to go for an early morning run. And let me be clear, I did not intend to go out and run a marathon when I left my apartment. No, what happened is I got lost. And then to compound that problem, I refused to ask for directions and just kept running, thinking I'm going to figure this out. Once I made my way to the river, I was able to make my way back to the Eiffel Tower, which was then only one mile from my apartment. So why does this matter? How does it apply to you? Well, first up, don't be as pig headed as me. And second, I want to highlight the power of signs. When you are lost, when you don't know where you are, sometimes a sign, an indicator you are on the right path is a godsend. You see, we had taken a boat cruise, so I had a pretty good idea of what was along the river, at least I've seen it once, and I knew that the Eiffel Tower was close to the river, and if I could get there, I could get home. Gents, the same thing applies to our lives. When you're lost, when you don't know what direction to go, there are signs, there are indicators that can point you in the right direction, or at least let you know that you're sort of moving in the right direction, or maybe the wrong direction. So the first sign that you're on the right path, you're choosing purpose and meaning over status and money. Now, let me be clear. There is nothing wrong with making money. There is nothing wrong with having status. But if you're letting those be the determining factor in what you want to do with your life, there is a problem. Example, you want to be a lawyer. You spend time studying, making sure you get your grades right in undergrad, making sure you can get into the right graduate school to be able to go to a good law school. You've got that bigger purpose. You have that vision of what you want to do. Or maybe you do want to be an ambulance chaser, but a good one because your dad was injured in an accident and he couldn't afford an attorney. Nobody took his case. No, you're committed to being that lawyer that helps the little guy stand up to the big insurance companies. Teachers, social workers, firefighters, policemen, you know the world needs good men serving in these roles. And if that's you, you want to serve a higher purpose, then you are on the right path. The next sign we want to look for that indicates you're on the right path, you're building emotional resilience. Emotional resilience is you becoming anti-fragile. Basically, it's improving your ability to handle setbacks, to handle failure, to handle criticism. So, how are you handling those things? How did you respond to your girlfriend's criticism when she broke up with you? Sure, I get it. She's no angel, but she did bring up the fact that you're spending more time playing video games than spending time with her and that you haven't applied to work anywhere else despite complaining for two years that you hate your job. And gents, I'm on your side. I'm not saying she's right, but I'm asking, does she have a point? When you've got emotional resilience, you try to remove the emotion and you try to look at things as they are. Your business failing isn't a reflection of you. It's maybe a reflection of, did you really give it your heart and soul? Did you really put in your full effort? Gents, the ability to look at things with a clear, objective view and even be a little bit critical and say, you know what? I can do better. Guys, when you can do this, it's a sign you are on the right path. The next sign, indicating you're on the right path, list out everything that has meaning to you. The people, the things you want to accomplish, put them down here. Next up, look at your budget, where you're spending your money, look at where you're spending your time, your calendar, list that out. And then ask the simple question, are things aligned? Are you spending your time and money on the things that are most important to you? I know for me, this was a wake-up call a few years ago because I was spending way too much time working on projects, yes, that I love and I enjoy, but not enough time with my family. Now, I'm not where I fully want to be, but I am wrapping up my work day at a reasonable time and I am taking regular vacations now with my family. As you can see here, we just got back from a trip in the Virgin Islands. We spent time on St. Croix and St. Thomas. What a beautiful country and amazing people. And guys, if you look close, you can see I've got a great looking watch on. Guys, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Aura Watches. Now, Aura was kind enough to send me a few of their watches and I have to say, Jens, not only are these watches beautiful, but they're functional and they stand up to everyday use. So as you can see here, they've got a modern sporty style because I know a lot of you guys are looking for an affordable watch that you're going to be able to dress up, you're going to be able to dress down. Now, the first watch I want to talk about is the stainless steel skeleton. I really like the look of this one. Now, this watch has a stainless steel case. It's got a stainless steel bracelet and it's an automatic watch with an impressive 80 hour power reserve. And the size for me, I've got about 6.5 inch wrist was perfect. Now, the case diameter is 40 millimeters. Lug to lug, it's going to be closer to 48. And the case thickness this really nice, just under 12 at 11.75 millimeters. Now, their second watch that they sent me was their 1023 in black. Now, as you can tell here, this is a very minimalist design. And similar to the skeleton watch, it's made from a stainless steel material. And the case size is about the same at 40 millimeters and just a little bit thinner. But my favorite Aura watch turned out to be their Date 001. It's classic, elegant, 
easy to read. I really liked the rose gold color. Another small detail I love is the clear case back. And gents, if you go over to the Aura website, what you're going to notice is that they've got a variety of straps that you can buy that work with all of their watches. So if you like the look of that 001, but you want to go with a rubber strap, then hey, you've got that option. And gents, as you would expect, all their watches have a two-year warranty. This deal right here is friggin' amazing. A hundred dollars off your first watch, go to aura.watch slash R-M-R-S. That's aura, A-U-R-A dot watch slash R-M-R-S. Gents, this is an awesome deal. It's not going to be around forever. Use it or lose it. These are great watches at a fair price. Take advantage of this deal. It's not going to be around forever. Next up, gents, let's talk about responsibility. This is a great sign. Now, I've talked about financial responsibility actually just a couple videos back, so I'm not going to beat the dead horse here. You guys know that if you're not paying for yourself, yes, there are transition periods, but to me, the mark of a true man is that he has financial independence because you're going to be expected in many situations to help out others. Could be your parents, could be a relationship you get into eventually kids for a lot of you guys. But gents, taking responsibility comes in a lot of other forms. You owning up to your own mistakes, not blaming it on other people, blaming it on the dog. Guys, we've all been there and it's easy to blame others. But the power when you accept responsibility is all of a sudden you have the power to change it. The reality is none of us are truly independent. We depend on each other for other things, and there is a need for volunteerism uh, or actually just communal engagement to make things run. Um, I lived in a co-op for a while. This was back in college, and I remember I was a little bit frustrated with the guys that were running because I didn't think it was efficient or effective use of my time, but I understood the need for us to contribute, to be able to make meals together, for us to be able to clean up. It was part of basically about being a family. I already had a family at the time. It was just something I was trying to do to save money. When you sign up for something like this, whether it be a co-op, whether it be a family, whatever it is, guys, understand you are taking on responsibility. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think guys that try to avoid all responsibility throughout life are going through that Peter Pan syndrome. They're never going to grow up. If you want to be something, if you want to do something in this life, you're going to need others. And in order to work well with others, you've got to take on some responsibilities. Now, this next one for a lot of you guys is easy. For some of you guys, it's going to be very difficult. I'm talking about physical fitness. A sign that you're on the right path is that you are taking care of this one body you have. Now, if you're already in love with fitness, going to the gym, taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, eating well, this is an easy one. But for some of us, me included in some ways, this isn't something I, I just always feel like I got to be working on my business. I got to be spending time with my family to make time for fitness. It's like level, of, I, it should be higher up. But for me, it just falls to number four, number five, number six on the list. Someday I'll get to it. And I found, I just went a week without working out. And I realized, what am I doing? If I don't take care of this body, how can I take care of others? I'll tell you what's worked for me lately is going out on walks. One, I've got an accountability partner. My wife, she likes to go walking with me. We talk about things going on in the family. So we're deepening that relationship right there. We're also kind of staying up on things. I find they're really productive. And if I don't go with my wife, I'm listening to audiobooks. So I find that, hey, I'm getting the exercise and I'm mixing it with these other things I want to get done. So it's that multitasking. So my point there is find a physical activity that you actually like. Maybe it's just playing pickup football or basketball on the weekends or throughout the week with some of your friends. And as many of you guys know, the best thing about team activities is that you've got other people depending on you. So you've got to show up. So you've got to participate. And speaking of audiobooks, the next sign that you're on the right path, you have intellectual curiosity. I'm not saying you got to go out there and read tons of books. I know for me though, I've got a stack of books on history that I read before going to bed. My wife thinks it's funny because I keep reading the same books, but I just find reading these stories, I get a deeper appreciation for them. It helps me to know that people before me have gone through things a lot harder than what I'm going through. But history books work for me. What works for you? Maybe it's finding a forum. Maybe it's finding a group. Maybe it's finding an online community of men that want to talk about, I don't know, style, hats. Maybe they want to talk about watches. Maybe they want to get into details about fragrances. Maybe they want to talk about architecture, whatever it may be. Find your tribe, find your group, but continue to be intellectually curious because that right there is a sign that you're learning, that you're improving, that you're getting better. The next sign that indicates you're on the right path, you have a moral code. You understand who you are, what you stand for, and where your line is at. So the other day I was in the store and I didn't get charged for a pretty large item in my cart. Didn't think about it. I'm leaving. I'm going through my receipts. And what do I see? I didn't get charged for it. Now I could have walked out of there. I had a receipt. I had gotten past everything. 
but I've got my own moral code because here's the deal is I've been overcharged for items and I've gone right back and got my money back. And I think it goes both ways. Yes, it's a big story. You could argue it makes no difference. I should have just taken that win. Gents, when you've got a strong moral compass, it gives you the courage to be able to see things through. It gives you the strength to be able to go through in the dead of night when it seems like you don't have anyone around you. You know who you are. You know what you stand for. You'll be able to find a way when you've got that moral ground. And guys, I want to be clear. I am not perfect. Oftentimes I fall down or I say, you know, I've made a mistake. And you being able to recognize that in yourself, realize that you have these standards and you don't always live up to them, but you're trying and you are going to make a concerted effort next time, or you're going to go back and correct it and do what is right. When you're doing this again, gents, this is a sign that you are on the right path in life. Now, this next sign that you're on the right path has for some reason become a little bit controversial in today's day and age when everyone needs to be looking out for number one. Everybody needs to be cutthroat in the workplace. The idea of having a strong work ethic has somehow become something that, oh yeah, you're, you're weak. No, you got to do what's right for you and to hell with the man. But here's the thing. Most of us work with other people. When you work with other people, oftentimes their work depends on your work. You realize, hey, yes, there are some a-holes, but there are also some great people that you've worked with through the years. Guys, if you can't be consistent, if you're not reliable, you are going to develop a reputation as somebody that is such. And I get it. You may have another opportunity, but you know what? You committed to your boss. You committed to this team that you are going to stick around and be here for another two weeks. And you'll have to explain to the other job, the other opportunity, hey, I need two more weeks with this company. I need to wrap things up. I don't want to leave them hanging. And then I'm going to jump over. I've had people tell me this and I always respect it because I think, you know, the way that they're treating the people at this company, the way they're treating the owner of that company is the way that they would actually treat me. Anyone that would up and leave someone else would probably up and leave me for what they view. You know, that right there is the mercenary mentality versus what I'm thinking here is more of the missionary mentality. Believe me, as a business owner that's hired a lot of people, I, yes, would like to get that person to come work with me as soon as possible, but I respect the fact that they're saying, hey, I'm going to need a month with my old company. I'm going to need two weeks to be able to wrap this up. I've given my word to my boss, to my team. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to leave them high and dry. What this tells me, what this shows me is the type of person that they are. Because if the roles were reversed, it was my company, it was my project. I was working with them on that particular issue. I would like to think that they would treat me the same. That's the kind of person I want to have on my team that treats other people with respect and has what I think a lot of us can agree on, a good work ethic. The next sign you're on the right path, you're seeking out a mentor, you are acting as a mentor for others. I know a lot of you guys are Star Wars fans. Okay, what do you need to be able to go from Padawan to Jedi? You've got to pass trials. But to go from Jedi to Master Jedi, you have to train a Padawan. Anybody that's been a teacher, anyone that's been a tutor, anyone that's had a little brother or sister that you've got to show something, you realize, okay, I got to break this down. I thought it was intuitive. I know what needs to be done by muscle memory, but to explain it, I need to really understand the notes on the piano because they're going to ask those basic questions that I thought were obvious, but I realized I probably did ask them as well at the very beginning. And on the flip side, when you're seeking out a mentor, you are being honest, you're being open, you're being humble. You are stating, hey, I don't know everything and I need help. I mean, let's go back to Plato. He was said to be the smartest man in what all of Athens, the Oracle of Delphi declared this because he didn't know a lot of things. And he was very open that he didn't know things. And all the people that, you know, would come in and say they knew this, he would question them and come to find out they didn't know as much as they think they did. Gents, by seeking out a mentor, and it can be virtually via video, there are tons of tutorials on YouTube. And don't, you know, swallow your pride. It doesn't need to be from someone older than you. Oftentimes, I'm on now learning from, you know, it's just certain programming skills or I'm learning little details about technology or AI from somebody that's half my age. Point being, if someone is the gatekeeper to that information and they're willing to share it. I am an avid student. I want to be there to learn. All right, gentlemen, so what video to watch next? Well, boom, I got you covered with this one right here. Seriously, you want to become a man? No, <laughs> it's a great video. You don't have to watch my videos to become a man, but you guys know here at Real Men Real Style, I try to create good content to help you. So go check it out. It's a solid video. You'll like it. Oh yeah, boom, right there.